Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Is wrestling. Welcome everyone to another episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling with Cody Diener. I am Cody Diener and I am a professional wrestler. I'm a professional wrestling producer. I'm also a professional traveling motivational speaker. Man, busier than I've ever been traveling up and down the roads. And when I'm doing that, I am away from my favorite job. I always tell people this is my favorite job over the wrestling the producing and the speaking my favorite job is being a dad i am a proud father of four wonderful beautiful children and a proud husband to a gorgeous wife and i love what i do guys i love what i'm doing right now this new venture semi new adventure we're a bunch of episodes in now and i'm now a podcaster and apparently a podcaster that is appreciated by you guys because I'm getting positive feedback each and every week from people on social media and especially my patrons over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. I want to say a special thank you to my patrons who have already listened to this part two with my buddy Steve Macklin because you got this episode early and ad free weeks ago over on patreon.com slash Cody Diener, as well as a really hilarious uh, bonus story from my buddy, Steve, that you would have listened over on my Patreon. So if you want to get this bonus story that is exclusive only to my patrons, head on over to patreon.com slash Cody Diener. You can get full, both audio and video of the podcast that you can download and listen to early and ad free as well as a bunch of bonus content bonus uh, private pictures that i share my personal collection of my my man cave and uh backstage and impact wrestling all a bunch of fun stuff trying to keep that uh light and awesome and insightful over on my patreon.com slash cody diener other ways you can support is by going to prowrestlingtees.com slash Cody Diener. Get yourself a t-shirt. Get yourself a personalized video from me to you over at cameo.com slash Cody Diener. All of these things are helping me be able to financially justify giving this podcast to you guys uh, early. Uh, well, early and ad-free over Patreon, but just doing this podcast for free each and every week. This is super time-consuming. I don't have a producer. I know a lot of podcasts that you might listen to. I mean, they've got producers. They got people behind the scenes kind of flicking the knobs and doing all the editing and producing and all that stuff. I do that all myself. Uh, editing this show, who does that? Me. Uh, who wrote the theme song, that, that beautiful, wonderful, catchy earworm theme song at the top of the episode? me who's slicing all this together and getting it out there on the interweb so people can listen to it on apple podcast spotify youtube google podcasts wherever you get your podcast who's doing that who's putting it up there me it's very time consuming which is why i tell you all the jobs that i have at the beginning of the podcast because i got a busy life now i say all this with no complaints i will not say hey guys i'm complaining about all the stuff that i do i don't do anything in my life if i don't love it it's kind of been my goal since the beginning of both my wrestling career and my speaking career and all the things that i do and now my podcasting career i don't want and we talk about i've talked about this on the podcast with my guests but i don't want to do something if i don't like doing it and i love all of my jobs and i love this new job of being a podcaster and i love bringing this show to you guys each and every week and love speaking to my guests like today's guest steve macklin this is part two with steve macklin and a guy that doesn't just have a really cool wrestling story this is a guy with a cool life story and that's the type of guest that i want to bring you guys not just cool wrestling stories but cool life stories and i know from the feedback that i've got from last week's episode with steve macklin that you guys are looking forward to part two and so am i 
If you are a business and you want to advertise on this podcast, not just any podcast, a chart topping podcast, because you guys are taking screenshots, sharing this on your social media, tagging me at Cody Diener. More people are learning about this show. More people are going to my Instagram and seeing the reels that I'm putting up. More people are going to my YouTube page at Cody Diener podcast, seeing the shorts and seeing all the videos that I'm uploading there. And they're sharing it with their friends and family. And it's bringing more people to the wrestling is life is wrestling family more people are learning about it and we're chopping the oh, we're chopping we're chopping it up but we're also topping the charts we are getting up there in the canadian charts up there in the american charts in the wrestling category for for podcasts and it's proving to me that i was right I thought at first that there's no room for another wrestling podcast, but then I thought, wait a minute, I don't want to just do a wrestling podcast. I want to do a very insightful life podcast that just happens to be with professional wrestlers. I want to motivate people, inspire people, and I think that there's an audience for that. I think, and I was right, there is. So if you are a business and you want to be a part of this family and advertise your business on this chart topping podcast, hit me up. I have an email, which is ads at Cody That's ads at Cody Or you can go to the podcast page, Cody slash podcast, and you can fill in the form. Let me know about your business, what you're looking for in terms of advertising, and we can do business together. We'll do business, and we'll let more people know about your business through my business. This new business venture that I've taken on as a podcaster. So thank you guys for listening, sharing, rate, reviewing, subscribing. Hey, put a review. If you're listening to this on Apple, go right now. Give me a little review. Give me five stars, and then tell me what you think. If you listen to this on Spotify, Give me five stars. Jump on there. Write a quick little couple sentences. Give me a review right now on Spotify. If you do that, I'm going to read it on this podcast. And I'll name you by name as well. I've done that a couple times on this podcast. And I'll continue to do that every time I get a positive review. And I appreciate all those positive reviews that are coming on in. So thank you guys for listening. I'm done doing my shilling and chatting and show opening stuff. Let's jump in to why you're here. You're here for part two of Steve Macklin. You listened to last week's part one and you got to the end. You're like, man, Cody, you're doing this to me every single week. You're doing a cliffhanger and I want to hear what Macklin has to say. Well, yes, so do I. So let's see the cliffhanger conclusion from last week and let's jump into part two right now with my buddy, Steve Macklin. there comes a point like all right what else do i have to do what do i need to do to get on your level because again i to go back to when blake and i were tagging you're seeing all the independent influx coming in and it's nothing ever towards the talent it's just the way the business is going you're seeing an adam cole come in roddy kyle bobby uh war machine came in who are the viking raiders now uh ricochet it just all the names were coming in at that time you're just like well what about me i've been busting my ass in this building I've been doing everything you said, and then I just I'm, I'm up here, and then if somebody else comes in, you get knocked on a pecking order, mm-hmm. and it's just that's just the way the business is, and that's yep. where the patience comes in, and it's just because that's out of your control, right? Yeah, to a certain, at, to a certain at, extent, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then that's when Blake and I were tagging, and we just both just said, "Screw it, let loose," and we had fun, and we were going out, and I thought we were having the best matches every house show, and I, anytime we're on a road loop, I had the best reactions because we worked with the crowd, we were wrestling with the street profits and heavy machinery. And then the, lo and behold, here we are having these great matches with them. They get called up and we're the stuck men. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, again, the business. Yes, it is. Yes. But it's, it was some of the fun, most fun times and the best learning experience too, because I got, I got to learn TV and how to work TV, how to learn behind the scenes and like, like how shows are run and just get good at breaking down match times, whether it's a six minute to a 12 minute set, like just, Mm-hmm. It just so much experience came through it. And that's where like at the time I didn't appreciate that. And then when I was fired, I was just like, you know what? I have all the tools they taught me. I'm going to go fucking prove them wrong. Yeah. That's such a good mindset. What's the most, if you could pinpoint maybe one, what was your most positive WWE experience or maybe positive lesson or takeaway from that? I mean, it's a long time, you know, six, seven yeah. years, but is there something 
that you took away that was that maybe sticks out whether there's it's experience a, or a lesson or a few would be yeah two that come to mind is being able to be with dusty for the year and a half uh, the first year there for promo class from monday to wednesday i would cut promos on wednesday i would sit on tuesday and every now and then i get to go and get on tuesday and then on wednesday was all the tv talent and i got to sit there and listen and i would listen to dusty critique and he he never told you what to say or how to say it. He would just find something that you said or a certain way. And he goes, this is what I see. And like, he just go like, interesting. he, he figured out who the person was. And that's where I got to learn from him and talk with him one-on-one. -on -one. And like, he's like, you got a machine gun. He's like, I like to talk. I, I, I shoot at rapid fire and I do my promos. I make my point. I look at the camera when I know I have to make my point. And that's how I speak. Mm -hmm. I'm not a robot. And I know in the business, everybody likes to try to, oh, this is how you do a promo. This is how you I don't, I fully take what Dusty taught me and that's how I try to implement it in the promos. You, you, and, if you're going to listen to somebody when it comes to promo advice, yeah. I mean, there's nobody better. Yeah. And it just, it was cool because I got to watch everybody grow at that time in NXT too. Uh, just how NXT blew up and you got to see a Finn Balor. You got to see the Vaude villains with Drama King and Gotch, uh, Becky, Sasha, like all those talents and just we're growing and you saw how they grow. And then once you saw them on the main roster, you say, Oh, this is pretty cool. Like you just see how people elevated themselves and just, that's where they've learned from those fundamentals of Monday, Wednesday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays with Dusty. Did that motivate you or did that sometimes unmotivate you seeing your people that were your equals, you know, you, you said seeing them grow and then they get to the next level, the next stage. I've noticed there's two types of people in life. They're, you know what I'm saying? They're on this, they're on the same level as somebody. And then when that person that's on the same level goes on to success, they can either get bitter from that or get motivated by that. It's motivation. And it's also at the same time, sometimes you get a little angry and it's more, the anger was at the younger people that were coming in after me uh, okay. where I would work their tryout and then they're getting called up within a year and a half. And I'm just sitting there waiting, what's going on? But then at the same time, you're just, that's where you learn that this is the business. This is a, an entertainment business. There's a role for everyone. If you're not fitting that mold, it's very hard to, like, you just got to find whatever your mold is, your niche that gets you to where you need to go. And that's just one of those things. It's, it's not our show. Control again what you can control. You do your best and you learn. And that's what helped me in WWE was getting to where I am now with Impact. And, that's the one thing I felt when I did come in. I was all right, cool. I have a I have a big chip on my shoulder to come in here, but I also have a lot of baggage of, of stuff and knowledge and talent that I can bring to the table. And that's one thing that I take away every time that I'm grateful for from WWE. Yeah. yeah. So what was what did we talk about? It? You said there was two things. The second the other one. The other one was when we got called up, and oh, we okay. had a, we went to a program. It was we got called up, and of course it was during COVID time. It was uh, in the PC. So it's like, here I am in the building uh, on SmackDown, getting called up in the building I've been stuck in for the past six years. Oh, right. Oh, geez. It sucked. Yeah. But what the best part about it was, was uh, New Day. It was Kofi and Biggie. And you always hear the horror stories of getting called up and they're not wanting to be so giving, calling a match. And like, it was one of those things where it just was like, wow, like, thank you. And, like, two good human beings, mm -hmm. well, all three of them in New Day with Woods too, but like Kofi and E have done everything already as a tag team. So they knew like, all right, we have to make this team and we're calling them actually, Hey, we can do this and this. And like, he's like, nah, you need more, man. We're like, okay, cool. Like, holy shit. Like, yeah. cause you hear the horror stories of like all the older guys want to keep the young talent there cause they're going to take their spot. And mm -hmm. that's one of those mm -hmm. things where it's just like, holy shit. Like it's not we good people. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yes. So like, I, 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 that's something I'll never forget for what Blake and I like for E to let us slam them on top of each other and hit a bunch of moves and tend to go over on new day. And, and our uh, debut was uh, one of those things. I was like, Holy crap. Like this is, yeah. I, I, I appreciate that. I don't forget that. That's, that's so good, man. I think that's such an, an important thing for people to remember and and take away from that is there is for some reason i guess there there is this misconception that okay you work your butt off once you get to this level you've got to be ruthless in, as a business person and someone who succeeds once you get to that level you got to be ruthless to maintain your spot and some guys operate that way right but you're saying 
they com- they did the complete opposite. They were not ruthless in any way. They were open. They were giving. And look at those guys, how successful they've been. They did not need to do it by being these ruthless, you know, assholes. They, yeah. they, they went the complete opposite. And I love that because we're in a business where that's not always the case, as yep. you know, right? So, man, that's, that's cool. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. Uh, those are the first thing, two things that came to mind. Yeah. There's, there's a bunch too. Like even when uh, I forget was it uh, the one mania in New Orleans, uh, me Blake, Riddick Moss, uh, Dan Mather were sitting back in the locker room. I want to say there's a couple other people there, but we're waiting. Roman just got done with Brock, and we're all sitting there, and the Usos are in there, Sheamus is in there. I forgot who else is in the locker room. They go, "What are you all still doing here?" Like, "Oh, we're just waiting for you guys to get out of here." And Sheamus goes, "Get the fuck out of here." He's like, "Just go." He's, like, "I know what you're trying to do." He's like, "Just go. You don't have to ever do that again." Oh, okay, cool. Because because we're doing the young guy thing, we're like, all right, cool. We're here in the locker room. We got hired or not hired here. We got brought here to be extras, and it was just one of those things where we just kind of hung out, and it was just another one of those moments of like, all right, cool. Yeah, you you earn the respect by just giving the respect, and that's just the business. And we Mm -hmm. sat there, we kept our mouths shut. We were spoken to, we spoke. Yes, right. So it just yeah, that's that that's so important. So you started to say before I went back to number two. Uh, transitioning into your time with impact you know you, you said you've brought in a lot of those great lessons that you learned you know through the pc through nxt those wwe experiences you brought them into into impact wrestling and i've seen that tenfold in in what you've been able to bring to to impact wrestling as a company um has working with impact i'm not going to ask you like what's the difference between WWE and Impact because I think that's that's a very generic question and I think it kind of speaks for itself. They're two completely different companies with completely different rosters and the business is the business, but there's a lot of different management is different, yada yada yada. And you've been asked that question a million times probably on other podcasts. But what I want to ask you is has working with Impact changed your perspective on the business? Because I'm you know, you you probably had a certain perspective and a way of looking at things when you were in the WWE system and then you came out of that system and you go into impact and you get to start doing indies, which I think is really interesting because you didn't do that before, which is the opposite. A lot of guys. So now you're working impact, which operates differently. You're doing independent wrestling. How, if I'm just assuming that that changes your perspective, but uh, on, on the business in certain ways, if that's true, what's how so? Impact is way more relaxed. Obviously, you mm. know that. Yeah. Uh, it took me, because during COVID, I, I debuted in Nashville when we were doing in the studio still with no fans. And mm. it was very, I was nervous as hell. Uh, just because, like, how do I debut a new character that I'm trying to show who I am while also trying to get a job? Yep. Uh, and show you that I'm a player, that I could be a player here. And it's just like, there's no crowd. And you're giving me a squash match for eight minutes. I'm just, I don't, I, a part of me is like, I want to go tell them I don't need eight minutes. I need five. Mm-hmm. Cause how am I going to feed off of a crowd? But you got to go out and you got to do it. You got to do what you can. And I remember yep. I went a minute short and I was like, oh, I apologize. It won't happen again. Next match I have went over a minute. I was like, sorry, that won't happen again. And then I hit times from then on out, but it was just one of those things of like, okay, cool. Like it took me about a month to gain my confidence at impact. And also to like, not be on eggshells and not know, like, if I do piss somebody off, they're going to come pull me aside and say something quietly. And they're not going to sit there and go to the office and then bury me. They, like, mm. It's not one of those things. And it sucks that like, it probably still happens here and there. I don't know. Maybe I haven't noticed it. I haven't seen it, me neither. but it's, it's one of those things where it's just, that's, that's the one big difference is there's uh, I can't say like, the, I've never had a problem with locker room. It's always more of the office side. Sure. Uh, there, there's snakes everywhere. in one side of the, well, there's snakes everywhere in general. Yeah. But uh, I've never had a problem. Like, it just, I, it, the only difference was just getting past that point and not walking on eggshells. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a very common thing that I hear from the and, boys and girls. Yeah. That have lived in both, both sides. And it, I didn't realize it too until Trinity came in and I saw her face and I saw the look on she had before she was debuting her, her, just her mannerisms. Like, hey, listen, I was like, I've been where you're at. I was like, my bit of advice is like, don't give a fuck. Go out there and just be you. Like yep. they're not going to, you're going to go out, you're going to kill it. And if something is wrong, they're going to tell you, and they're not going to bury you for it. They're just going to tell you, 
hey, maybe try this or maybe don't do this. Mm -hmm. And it was just one of those moments where it, just, it was cool to just see that on the opposite spectrum. Yep. And that goes back to what we are talking about earlier in the sense like only worry about the things that you can control and don't overthink it. Yeah. Right. One of the most best selling books in the last decade is the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Right. Like there is huge power in that. And you just work against yourself if you're caring too much and overthinking. And that's hard when you're in this environment of questioning things all the time and and walking on eggshells um one piece of advice that i've given to guys in your situation people that have come over to impact go being from the previous system and i'd like to hear your response to this is i always say be very cognizant of who you take advice from don't you can't take everybody's advice or you're going to lose your confidence so start now thinking about who are the few people that I'm going to go to and ask and just go to them. Pick, find your dusty roads and go to dusty when it's after a promo, you know, find your Gerald Briscoe after you wrestle and, and go to them, find those people and don't let the other ones cloud your judgment. Does that ring a, yeah, no. ring a bell or ring true for you? So much just because we have a lot of like, impacts got a great locker room for that. There's a lot of great veterans like with you, Kazarian, Josh, freaking Heath there. Like, I talk to Heath just about, I talk to Heath all the time about life just in general. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get into wrestling here and there, but like, it's just a great locker room where you just can go to anybody for anything, whether it's, yeah. it's life advice, what's going on here. Hey, how do I like, I'm, I'm pricing myself at this on the Indies. How do I get more booking? Like, because yeah. that's something I had to learn too. So it's like, all right, cool. Now I know like those people I can nitpick off of. And then even just going to Scott, like Scott, when I first got there with promos, but I see you more like Jake the Snake style. Vibe. I'm like, ah, I, I, I see where you're going, Scott, but I don't agree. That's just not how I speak. Interesting. And then like we finally work together and like that's just kind of where we kind of, we finally gelled. Like we, he gets what I am. And even after the match at Under Siege with PCO, yeah. We sat down and uh, after I was all bloody and whatnot, he goes, I know why you wanted to go out there and do that. What you did, he's like, you went out and killed it. He's like, but I want you to be safe and be healthy the rest of your life. I was like, Scott, I do too, but I want to make this company better. And that's just one of those things where like, I'm going to give you everything. Like, again, I commit to everything I do. Uh, the better I do, the better the company will do. The better the company does, the better that I'm doing, everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. At least paycheck wise, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so, so like, I want everybody to do well. Like that's just the thing. Like anywhere you go to meet, you should go there to be the best and also elevate everybody. Whether you think you're green or you're you're a vet, like you just never change your mentality on what you want to do or where you want to go. And what I want to do is make it the best product possible. Mm -hmm. That's such an important life lesson, though. Is whatever endeavor you're going into, I think this is so important in wrestling. And but wrestling is life. Is wrestling yeah. is go go into whatever endeavor you're going into with the mindset of oh what's that saying you know uh rising tide raises all ships you know or whatever that saying is you know it's like we're all gonna be elevated if the tide goes up but just your boat isn't gonna go higher if the tide doesn't go up everybody has to go up at the same time so having this mentality of i want everything to, to go up. I want everyone to do better, not just me. That is probably the number one thing I've heard from talent and impact wrestling about the locker room uh, is everybody. It sounds so cliche. Oh, we're family. Like, and that's just something you say. It's not, it's not just a thing that's said. It's so true about the impact locker room. Like everybody wants everyone to do well and is, giving people positive words of encouragement and like go going up to others and like, Hey man, that was awesome. What you did. Maybe try this. Like that doesn't happen everywhere in, no. in wrestling locker rooms or in life. Right. Like it's kind of that, what I, what I was saying earlier, when people see other people succeed, they get bitter instead of rather being motivated. I see the positive motivation in our locker room of, yeah, every time somebody succeeds, people are happy for them. And then it, mo it motivates them and it's, lot of encouragement and always the same mentality that you have which is why i think you've you've stuck around and why you're going to continue to stick around and impact because you have that mentality that everybody has and i think the impact management is really cognizant of that and wants those people in the company which is why i think we're it's 
<laughs> why it's so awesome yeah. quite frankly and, it, it, and it, that's the one thing everybody was like oh how do i watch impact i'm like you need to watch impact and everybody says oh i watch it here and there it's like no you need to watch impact wrestling because even before i even got to the company i was watching with d and uh she'd be watching on a twitch stream when everybody mm-hmm. was still streaming on twitch during covid i'm just sitting there like this is a really good show i think yep. i've said this on every pod like every podcast or any interview like i'm like i would watch them like this is good wrestling like yes. anything you want to watch it has it and it just i if i can enjoy it as just a person and take myself out of being a wrestler and be a fan still yep. like and i can enjoy it i'm like okay cool it's the same that goes for watching raw on mondays or watching AEWs on tuesday or on wednesday and it's smacked on friday like it's just one of those things where i like to go watch everything and then i love seeing friends that i was with in the pc being yeah. successful on SmackDown and Raw, and I'm sitting there seeing people like Gable get his opportunity, and I'm watching. I'm like, fuck, like, fuck yeah, man! Like, because he's a good human being. He's a guy that fucking stuck out. Like, he just he gave everything to it. And he gives everything to it, and he's he's getting that push right now. And it's one of those things where you see a friend doing that, and you're just like, that's it's good to see, and like that motivates you even more. Instead of being, you can be bitter all you want. Oh, that should be my spot. It's like, no, that's his spot right now because he earned it. Yeah. Like, so now you have to go earn your spot. Wherever you're at, you got to go earn whatever you're doing, and then it elevates you. Yeah. Well, speaking of earning a spot, let's let's talk about how you went from a guy just sitting and watching a Twitch stream of Impact. Fast forward, and you are the Impact World Champion. That's yeah. there's a long trajectory and a lot that had to happen to get there. But how did becoming a champion? change you as a performer more pressure on myself i and you know you and i have had those conversations post-match whether you're a producer or not where you'd be like i can see you thinking Mm -hmm. i'm like "Uh uh-huh because i am and then there's times where i'm in the zone where i'm not thinking and i'm just doing and reacting and that's one of those things where it's like okay cool like the company is investing in me to be the champion right now however whether it's a week six months to a year I'm going to prove to them that they made the right decision. Okay, so my name is Eden, and we're going to talk about what my dad does for wrestling. Who's your dad? Um, Cody Dino. Oh, and what's, your, and what's your name? Eden. How old are you? Um, five. Everybody knows who you are now, because they've heard you on the commercials on the podcast before. This yeah. is my beautiful daughter Eden. And what do you want to talk to them about? What I, what I pack up for wrestling, and what you do. Okay, and tell them. I have no idea you what you're about to say. Okay, well tell them because I'm 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 kind of nervous about what you're gonna say because I have no idea what you're gonna say. I'm curious. What do you have to say? You tell them. Okay, so I just had to say that what, how dad came wrestle. He went to a wrestling school. Yes. And he practiced with a guy. You're right. And he had, and my dad, um, when he was a kid, he went to a wrestling, a wrestling ring. Yeah. And it didn't have any mats on it. It was just like very hard. Mm. And he had to go onto the ropes and then go onto his back and flip onto his back. Yes. And then it take, ho- bad, take a bump is what we call it. Taking a bump. That's what you're describing. Yes. Taking and, a bump. Uh, yes, and, and then what happened is him is he had to do that a bunch of times. And then when he did that, his back was so so he couldn't even walk. And then when that happened, he had to go into bed, but he couldn't even lay down. So he told his mom that to um go into the you know mom the mom helping him getting to the into the bed so um i'm sorry about not putting the make a little phone but no deal to apologize <laughs> but um i just i just had to say that because that i'm not really you're bad. apologizing for not holding the microphone up to your mouth but you're doing okay so keep going yeah. now you got it in front of your mouth totally okay. totally yeah okay go so ahead so now um i we also are talking about, you know, the wrestling school it's called We've, Netpro Studios. Yeah, you know? we, we talked about that. We yep. talked about it last time we talked to each other, but I actually want to talk about something else today. 
Oh, you so were, you what? About, what? Okay, what? so you talked about how I was a wrestler, yes. and the reason you've you've heard this story because Eden, for my listeners know, Eden has heard me do speeches before. I go around to schools, and I do speeches. If you want to learn more about that, this is actually not what I'm advertising today, but I'm going to take the opportunity to do it after okay. Eden's wonderful story. People can go to so, uh, <laughs> so people can go say? people can go to chrisgrayspeaks.com, and that is all my information that is on there. That posted you. No, dot that's com. no, that's something else. We that was that's crazy steve's wrestling school we did that weeks ago Studios. yeah okay so actually let so i didn't even mean i don't even want to advertise chrisgrayspeaks.com but i am now because you told that wonderful story but what i want to tell them about is actually this thing that what i'm you, holding i want this thing that i'm holding that oh. they can't see but we have to describe this to them Oh, so this is just like a bag that um, my sister made for a big belt to fit in it. That's right. My, your sister. What's your sister's name? River. Yes. My daughter, River. She is, well, she's 11 when I'm recording this, but she has a birthday coming up. So she's actually 12 by the time you're listening to this. Yes. And um, she is making custom championship belt bags yes, yes, out of yes. velvet. It's got a drawstring. Mm -hmm. You can go to Finch. you can go to at Cody Deaner and see some pictures that I've posted there. Go to my Instagram at Cody Deaner and you'll see pictures of this bag. Can you? What does it feel like? It feels like fabric and soft. Yes, it's fabric soft. It is a uh, velvet. And what is this coming out of the hole there that you pull on? String. Yeah, and what happens if you pull it? Pull the string. Pull them both, yep. Whoa. Hold the microphone up. Tell them what happened. What happened, it made it tighter. It made it tighter, the one end tighter. So this is a custom belt bag. So if you have a championship belt, whether yes. it's a replica or a real mm -hmm. one, if you're a promoter who has a wrestling and company. And it's very special, then make sure to ask River to make a bag for it. That's right, and she will. So how you get a hold That's of my what daughter, she's River? That's doing to get a hundred of money. Oh, get a hundred of money? Yes. Oh, yeah, she it's is. She's, she's making so much money. She is. She's actually making yeah, hun hundreds of money now because if, if she's, she's selling a bunch. Because if she's making a lot of money, then she needs a lot of piggy banks to fit that money in. That's right. Yep. Let's make it so that River needs lots of piggy banks. My uh, <laughs> gorgeous daughter, River, is doing the side hustle business. And look at the storm. She's make. an entrepreneur like her dad. And... Um, um, so, but she doesn't have a website or email or anything because she's 12, so you have to contact me. Why are you saying the stuff that I'm going to say? Because I didn't know you were going to say this stuff. Say, say, at Cody Diener. At Cody Diener. Say, DM. DM. Yes, that's how people can get a hold of me. They can just direct message me on my social media and if they want a belt bag. if you want to find Dad's mesh, message, um, voice films, then does... White Frame's name, and then you'll be there. Right? What? Wait, Dad's name on your point. I'll search for you, and then you'll be there. Oh, search for my name? Like, yeah. just search Cody Diener? Yeah, and then. Yeah, she's find right. It. She's right. Just do that. Just search Cody Diener, and then you can go to my social media. Then message me and say, hey, I want River to make me a bag. And then we can make you a custom sized velvet belt bag. And you can see the pictures also, of how awesome these he, things are on my social and media. And also, if you want. The prizes that I make on paper with fabric, then I can make one. Oh, <laughs> so now you're gonna you're promoting your business now. You have something that people can make. What are you gonna What are you gonna make them? I guess well, Eden's got a side hustle when, now that I've just when learned I about. When I grow up, I'm gonna make my own wrestling suit. Your own wrestling suit? Oh. And I'm gonna work at a store to make them. Okay. So. Are we going to start doing that for my fans right now? You're going to, do you want them to message me to get you to make something for them? Yeah. You're going to make them a wrestling suit? All right. So if you want my 12 year old daughter to make you a custom belt bag, which is completely real, message me at Cody Diener in my DMs. And if you want my five year old daughter to make you a wrestling suit, then Eden can do that for you. What's your company's name, Eden? What are you going to call your company that makes wrestling suits? I am going to call it WrestlingSuits.com. There you go, WrestlingSuits.com. I'm going to have to go on the internet and search that and see what happens, when it, see what pops up. We'll go do that right now after you say goodbye, okay? Hey, goodbye. Bye.
Say bye one more time. I like your voice better than mine. Goodbye. Companies investing in me to be the champion right now, however, whether it's a week, six months to a year, I'm going to prove to them that they made the right decision. And I'm going to prove even more and make you not want to take the title off. Of me. Mm. Like, how do I keep this as long as possibly I can until the, obviously creative has its own ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. But it's like, how can I elevate the game now as the guy who holds the title? Because mm -hmm. sometimes the guy that holds the title isn't the guy. That's just sure. how it is. Right. But at the same time, how do I make myself in that light be the guy? And I, I thought I did a good job at that. Uh, and you and I, we chatted after uh, against the lives with Shelly, and it was you and Lance, the only two, well, a bunch of, obviously, with the cameras rolling. I was trying to be the heel going the opposite way uh, from where everybody was congratulating him because I just wanted to go tell Shelly great match. But um, you came, that was one of the nights you came up to me, too. He was like, you didn't think you, you gave me good, good encouragement. So I appreciate you for that. Yeah. But, man. um, that's just where like you just pressure, like it just taking pride in what you do. And again, committing, just yeah. commit to it. If you're going to give me this title, I'm going to make sure everybody watches impact wrestling. I want to make more eyes beyond this product. I want to go out there and deliver the best possible match or the most memorable match, whether it's five minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I don't care. I want to give the crowd some people to remember me. What can Steve Macklin do tonight? That makes you people talk about Steve Macklin and then talk about impact wrestling. I feel like you were just, you were hitting the before you got injured, unfortunately, and we'll talk about that too, if you want. Um, but you were hitting the stride, man, where I think it goes to everything we, we've we already been talking about. You were walking that line perfectly where you've got to, ca you care. You're thinking and working hard because you care so much because you want to be good, right? That's why you're, you're putting in that work and you're like you're, the pressure you're putting on yourself. You're talking about it's because you care so much. Right. So that's good. That's good pressure. However, we've also said in this talk that not to overthink it. Right. And you just, you got to stop overthinking because then once you start overthinking, then you're not being authentic. You're not being yourself. You're not going to succeed. So there's that line you've got to walk, right. Where you've got to care enough that you're putting in the effort in the right places as you walk that razor blade. But as soon as you start trying too hard, you'll fall off. And I think that's one of the things that I came up to you and said at one point, I was telling you, I started to see that as I'm watching you. I'm like, you're hitting that stride and walking that razor blade where you're in that sweet spot where you care because I mean you, you, you're holding the strap. You're the you're the champ. You use a lot on your shoulders, but you're also letting loose and starting to let loose. You were really hit, hitting that, and I think that's a. I'm not saying it as eloquently as I would like to, but I think that's just important for every everybody to for everything in life, right? You've you don't I th this idea of you know the subtle like we said earlier the subtle art of not giving a fuck, right? Like if that doesn't mean to not care <laughs> about what you're doing because you're going to care about the things that are important to you. And that's, an, that's yeah. so key and vital, but there is that sweet spot that you got to find. Did you think, did you, did you think before you got injured, you were finding that sweet spot? Cause I felt like watching you that you were hitting that sweet spot. We were getting there just because like I started getting on the creative side of like, all right, where are we going? What's mm -hmm. this story? And that's where I'm okay. We're going here. Then I'm going to do this. Like in my own head, I'm like, cool. It, it, I know what they can control on this end. Again, back to that. This is what the finish is, but I can control this part of it. I can control that wave going into it. I'm like, all right, cool. How can I go out there and best this and make them realize oh, maybe we're making a bad decision? Yeah. And, I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So it was like one of those moments. And then, like, getting hurt, yeah, getting hurt sucks. Yeah. It's one of those things in this business that just happens. And uh, to go to Australia, for me and Shelly to go there, and then we're about 22 minutes into the match and to be hurt. Like, I, like it was finally, like, you know when you're in a match and you're just, all right, we got, like, in the beginning, it's slow, and you're listening to the people, and you're just like, ah, what, are they, they, what are they, are they tired? Where are they at? Like, yeah. and then we started moving, and then we started getting to some type, type of contact, and they're like, oh, oh, okay, cool. And then once we started hitting fall season, I'm just like, oh, we kind of got them. We got them yep. here. And then we Those started the cooking. Ones. Yeah. And then, of course, as soon as we start cooking, I hit that uh, bicycle knee 
Oh. I landed and just from my knee all the way from my mid and abdomen, like just something crunched. I don't know what it was. And it just felt like somebody kicked me in the ball so hard, oh. but like, I couldn't sit up. I couldn't move. And then I hit and then I show, he's like, you okay. I was like, yeah, just stay there and give me a minute. I went to go pick him up. As I went to go pick him up, I was like, nope, nope, nope. Put him back down. I was like, just stay there for a second. I was like, maybe it's a cramp. Maybe it's just, I, I was, I was dehydrated. Maybe from sitting on the plane too long. I don't know. Uh, and then as I went to go get up, I just was like, no, nope, we're going home. Sorry, brother. <laughs> I was like, yeah. something's really wrong. Yeah. And just to finish, like, and that's also, again, getting back to fundamentals of wrestling. Like something goes wrong, get to the finish. Yeah. Like, clean mm -hmm. it up as nobody knew. Nobody in the fans knew. Obviously, when rolling out, it's a flat finish, obviously. But, like, we got to where we need to get to. Uh, but I, I remember getting in the back. It's like, shit. And Scott's like, you okay? I was like, no, I can't even, I can't crunch. I, I had to stand the whole time. Mm. But uh, what it is, uh, what I got diagnosed was partial groin tear. Uh, it was like a grade two sprain, but a, a partial tear in my groin. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of my uh, my junk uh, was black and blue, uh, oh, so that was dude. very odd. That was a very odd thing to see. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, what is going on? Uh, oh, dude. And what made it what made it worse was after the spray tan was rubbing off. That's where I started seeing more color go like this. Like the yellow or like the bruising. Oh, okay. I'm just like, oh, this is awful. And he's like, you okay? I was like, no. Oh, uh -oh. man. Talk about it a plane ride home from hell. But uh, no kidding. What? Yeah. So, have you learned anything through this experience? Like, have you been hurt before? Yeah. Like, have you been injured before? Yeah. Uh, so, actually, the first year at Impact, I tore my labrum, never got it fixed. I just worked uh, through it. Right. Uh, tore my labrum in my right shoulder. Hey, that's just the business. You, you yep. can find a way to work around injuries and I got to put food on the table. I can't be out right now. And yeah. this is one of those injuries that uh, kept me down. I hated it. I'm glad you got to step up though for uh, slam. So thank you. Yeah, I, I, I should have started that way. We took us <laughs> only took us an hour to get there, but me well, saying, I thought hey, the story. Thank I thought the yeah with you and you are right now. It, it made sense for the story. Anyway. Yeah, but thank you. I, I I apologize for taking your spot, but I also no. I couldn't have taken it from a better dude. So I no. uh, hopefully no I did. Can I, replace me. Thank you, man. I hopefully I did you. I. I know we're joking, but I'm also being very serious, like in the sense that I, I took that very seriously because I respect you so much and I knew how much that match meant to you and how much build and was put into that. Like I talk about pressure, putting pressure on yourself. I put pressure on myself knowing appreciate it. I got to fill. The, I'm going to I got to fill this spot properly because you had some big yeah. shoes that I needed to fill there, Steve, because yeah. that was that was a big match. And you guys you guys worked your asses off and built a very intriguing angle um, that I just got thrown yeah. into. So um, I, I wish for you that you would have got to experience the blow off of that. Okay. But I also I won. I, I had a blast. Uh, I had a blast <laughs> in the match. But I, I had asked you, what did, what did you learn? Like, was there something that you learned or or? continually learning right now as you're dealing with it learning i'm, I'm older uh, a yes. lot older in life obviously from two combat tours and football growing up and wrestling and all the dumb bumps i took starting out in the pc and live events and all that it, it, it's finally catching up where i'm like i gotta stretch more i have to be more cognizant of my body and do a little bit more yoga not the ddp style but just mm. take care of my body and learning different exercises now with bands and is it like yeah. I, learned, I knew them. I just was being lazy. And now I'm, I'm, I'm more uh, cognizant of my body and stretching. And we, if anything, I, I learned was uh, started building a home gym now here in the house so that I don't have to leave the house uh, sometimes. Great. Granted, I go to the gym every now and then just because I like to get out of the house for that reason. But um, building the home gym. D, of course, at first, he's like, oh, well, I'm not going to really work out here. And here she is working out in the gym more than mm -hmm. I am sometimes just because it's a good little sweat box, too. And it's a good... I don't know, it's just a good re release too, especially having the dogs in there. And uh, so I'm getting off track now of the actual yeah. conversation, but it just <laughs> it just opened my mind towards uh, resting more as well. Because I'm a guy that never really likes to rest. I, I uh, usually am in the gym seven days a week. Right. I do some type of physical activity, and now yesterday I literally my Wednesday is usually my day off. At least one day a week now I have nothing. I just I'll take the dogs for a walk. That's it. Yeah. My wife, my wife gives me crap for that too, man. I, uh, cause I'm dealing with, with some nagging stuff right now as well. And my wife was like, do you think maybe this is a sign that you need to slow down and maybe rest a little bit? Yeah. And it's like, whatever it is in, in me, like you, it's like, no, no, that's not what it is, but it is like, she's very right. But again, I, back I to wrestling. It's that. like, the, 
it's the old vet saying, "Hey, kids, slow down." Right now, now it's our body. So totally, man, I can relate to that big time. But that's yeah. that's it's so important, isn't it? Funny how we are in this business that's totally reliant on our physical health to be able to even do that. Yet we neg we neglect that for whatever reason. You oh yeah. Know. With, with the amount of <laughs> caffeine intake, sometimes alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Or just dehydrating just, ourselves. Yeah. yeah. I'll swing my arms a few times, do 10 push ups. Okay. I'm warmed up. I'm good to go. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm uh, not. <laughs> yeah. It's just now, now I know, like I have my, I have my own little routine now. I'm going to try to implement every warm up for a match, but usually I just puke my guts out before a match anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, all no, right. that's, it, it slowed me down. That, that's the one lesson I got out of all this. Is, hey, yep. you're getting older. Start to start to take care of your body a little yep. bit more, even though you think you're taking care of it. You're really not. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good a harsh lesson to have to learn, but a good one um, yeah. to learn. So I want to be cognizant of your time. We're getting, we're getting, uh, we're at our time here that I told you we were yeah. going to take, but I want to ask you just a couple more things just to wrap yeah. up. One thing I want to ask you is, and maybe, maybe even this last couple weeks or months you, but you've been held up. Maybe you'll give a different answer to this than you would have before, but maybe not. What brings you joy in your life right now? family mm. my wife man i waking up with her every day and is the best thing in the world mm. to be able to roll over see her and we have the dogs they make it hard to get out of bed i'm sure it's with you with the kids too if they're kind of cuddling with you or Absolutely. you're late in bed you don't want to get up and move that's peace for me i yeah. like that's one of those things where I, i'm very family oriented i always have been growing up uh so it's just one of those things where deanna's gotten a lot closer with my family as well like i have my three cousins who are in south carolina with their family Oh, cool. My uncle up there. But like, they're, I grew up with all girl cousins. So, like, they're my sisters. So, she's getting to enjoy my sisters pretty much. And just, we're, we're very close. And that's the one thing I try to enjoy, especially with the schedule that we're allowed to impact, is just the time I can just enjoy life. Oh, and not, that's great. not, like, just turn off. Like, yeah. I love wrestling. I, wrestling is my life. Uh, it really is. Like, everything relates around wrestling. But when I can just put my phone down and turn off, and just enjoy the time with my family and just it's that's the best thing to do. can you can you indeed do that because i married outside the business you married within it and so like it's a fair i'm sure you have a very wrestling heavy wow. household i'm seeing that picture behind you you're both holding your championship belts like yeah. that's your life right do you guys yeah. have to purposely nah. shut shut it down shut it off together is there is our office is the only place where there's any type of wrestling memorabilia ah, okay so gotcha. yeah, every this is all like, this is like our wrestling room, comic books, life, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. kind of everything into one. Yep. Uh, but um, I'd say we're about like like an eighty percent household of always wrestling, and then twenty percent shut off. Okay, if that makes any sense? Yep, Just totally. It, Monday through Friday, there's wrestling on television. I'm watching everything. I always watch back the episodes on Thursdays with Impact, just because I want to know what everybody's doing. Even the past few months that I've been out, mm -hmm. I want to know everybody's storylines, what's going on, like. Dude, Smart, crazy, of course. Steve's, crazy Steve's vignettes, the interviews Dude. he's been doing, like that's the stuff that I like, and yeah. like just being able to like just that's I just I ne that's where I don't shut off. Or if she has gear ideas or this or that, like I've been in the garage creating my new jacket, and like mm. those are the times that I don't shut off because I always have a creative mind and I don't ever want to take myself out of it. But when I do, it's it's very easy for us to shut off. Where we just we go away for the weekend, whether it's St. Augustine or we just went there uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, just for a three day weekend to just get away. And it, dude, it's it's the best. To just it enjoy life best. and just go enjoy food and see things and just yeah. a little bit of history here and there. And then I, with school, like trying to finish up college, I started the next semester here on Monday. So like that keeps me really busy too. So oh wow, good for you, dude. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, I won't even. I want to. I want to ask you about that kind of. But I, I want to be conscious of your time. That's good. That's, yeah. That's like. Yeah. Finish up. Uh, it's one that's, thing. Like my mom. My mom always wished I got a degree. We'll, we'll get okay. into it real quickly. Okay. So yeah. The one thing. And then Dee's also pursued me. She's like, "Why don't you finish your degree? You have two and a half years left." Because she did that but, too, right? Like she worked. She just. Yeah. She just. She that. just yeah. graduated. She got her. Uh, ma or, uh, not a master's. Uh, master's in history. Right. As okay. A major. So it's just one of those things where it's just. Another one of those things like, do I need it down the road? Maybe. I don't I don't know. I'm yeah. trying to get a degree in psychology and uh, that's the one thing like I'm I, I'm enjoying it. 
do I need it? No, but will it be something that one day I can tell my kids like, Hey, like, yeah, you could, you go out and if you see, commit to it again, mm -hmm. if you're going to do something, commit to it. And that's one of those things of just, just checking those boxes in life. And like, all right, I did this, I did this, I did this. And then I'm also enjoying life. So oh, you can do wonderful, it. Man. Everybody yeah, can, can do it. If you make that's the time right. for it. Yeah. All right. So let's, before we go, let's put over your wife one more time. Uh, Cause I know you're, you're putting over your wife on social media. You're doing your, mush, your, your, your mushy, I love you post, which is wonderful. And I can, I am right on par with that in the sense that the best decision I ever made in my life was getting married to my wife. The, the best decision of my life. I know there's young people listening to this, that that sounds insane to them because there's a lot of people you, that have a lot of bad things to say about marriage and getting married and, you know, starting a union with somebody. I'm will have nothing but positive things to say about deciding to get married and being married. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, what has being married taught you about being a man? Nothing that's changed from when we first started dating, uh, treating her with respect. Like, okay. Great. Husband and wife. Yes. That's a, that's a vow. That's mm -hmm. a solemn vow to each other. But I vowed to her when I met her, I told her I would, I'm going to marry you one day. So that was just my thing. Like I knew right mm -hmm. off the hand, I was like, this, this, she's everything. Oh, uh, yes. She's my, she's my purpose. Uh, she makes me just strive to just want to be better and to pursue everything that I want to pursue. And she even has to push me sometimes to commit, like, especially with school. Like, the days I don't want to do my homework. She, she's like, my mom, she's like a mom. She, yeah. go, to your, go to your homework. Do you do your homework? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Homework. yeah. But just as a man, just, I don't know, just, I take pride in being able to provide and take care of her. Just vice, same as well. We're a very 50 50 household. Mm -hmm. There's not the, the old days of, oh, I'm going to work, you're staying at home type thing. It's one of those things of like, no, we do this together. Yeah. And that, that, that's, I think, in any really, and that's another one back to my parents of growing up, like my stepdad and my mom, they did everything together. Like everything was a 50 50 decision. If there was a major decision, I was included in it. But like that's where we talk, we communicate. And I think that's any relationship, whether it's wrestling, life your partner whoever you're with like just communication is key telling people how you feel and that's the one thing that her and i have is no matter what or how bad it something is or how angry we are or how happy are we we express to each other how we feel and i don't know if that's the best uh actually i think that's the best relationship advice i could give somebody is like totally just, you have to communicate and that's yes. just in anything and yeah. we do that and like It'll be when we first started dating, I'm like, hey, I'm just like, we'll tell each other our ideas or like this, or I'm thinking this, or the random, like, hey, what's your favorite color or movie? Like, that's how you get to know somebody. But then once you get to know them on a mental level of like, what makes them angry or sad or like, what pisses them off, or she's on the phone with her mom and has a bad conversation, and I'm like, all right, tell me about it. Or, mm -hmm. and I, and like, just, Absolutely. Just, just life. Yes. Yes. And I think that's really cool to hear. I think it's important for people to hear because. I think it's there's a there's a misconception with wrestlers that were just like tough, gnarly meatheads. Add that for you, you're also military. So, you know, there's this there's a misconception that well, we don't talk about your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're 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 a, you're a tough dude. If that's if a man doesn't talk about his feelings, he pushes them down and doesn't talk about them and just forges ahead into the battlefield and in the ring and does his thing. Well, you're saying no, it's the opposite, right? You, what it, being a true man is actually talking about these things with your significant other to support one another and be there for your for your partner. You want to know what I did Sunday? Watching the, Japan, the multiverse two. Yeah, I made a batch of twelve cupcakes while getting drunk watching the pay per view. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> and then I ate, then I ate all twelve cupcakes because <laughs> I like to bake. I like, I like to bake. I like to cook. I like to clean. So like to. Go back to what you just said. Like everybody thinks who's where they just we're people, but we just portray a character on television. Sure, who we are in the ring and outside of the ring is completely different most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, it's a part of you in the ring, definitely. Uh, but um, yeah, no, just I just I she lets me be me and she gets to be her, and like we never have yeah. a fault with each other. Yeah, like it's, I don't know, and I'm sure that's with you and your wife or any relationship. Like, there's everybody has their faults, but that's where you adapt to them and you learn from them and you just accept it and just like this is my person. Yep. And to bring it full circle, one of the first questions I asked you was, you know, what did you learn from your parents and as a kid? And you had said, you know, learning how to commit and do something right. And you have found somebody who you just, you said it, as I was asking about Diana, she, you said, 
she makes sure that you stay committed to what you're doing and making sure you do your homework or whatever it is. Yeah. If you got this goal, she's keeping you in line. And that's, that's so cool that you have found someone that's going to keep you on the straight and narrow and keep you focusing on the important things that you know you need to be focusing on, just like your, your, your parents did for you and, and as, as a kid. And the, as one of the valuable life lessons here on wrestling is life is wrestling that we talked about at the beginning. We just talked about at the end with your, with yeah. your beautiful wife. So that's, that's awesome, man. I, uh, I very much appreciate you giving me your time and, mm -hmm. and speaking to me. I know there's going to be a lot of people that um, weren't expecting to learn some of the things that I learned about you today. Also um, weren't expecting to take, the, the, they knew they were going to get some takeaways because that's one unique thing that I'm getting feedback from this podcast is people like, oh man, this is this is different than other wrestling podcasts I've listened to, um, which was my my whole goal um, in in the beginning of trying to make something different. But also, I'm learning every time I talk to somebody, I'm getting stuff from these people I'm talking to. That I'm learning about myself. I'm learning about life through listening to other people share their stories, and I know that the listeners are too. So I know there's a lot of stuff that you dropped here today that is going to help somebody um, in their life move forward towards their goals. Just listening to your story and your perspective on things. I know you've you've helped somebody today with, with what you've said. I oh, appreciate it. I'm sure, I'm sure it's the same for you going and doing seminars and stuff. Like as long as you can reach one person with a little yep. bit of knowledge or something to take away. And that's that's all you can ever help for is just helping one person. Um, if you can help more than that, then, then that's the best thing possible. I want to help everybody. Awesome. Uh, would share my story and hopefully uh, my life lessons and uh, wrestling with life or wrestling yep. is life is yes. uh, that, that wrestling. It really is life though. It's just it is, uh, man. up and down of baby faces and heels constantly. Clashing <laughs> and, uh, yep. it's the best. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for doing this. I appreciate you, man. Well, thanks, Dina. I appreciate having me on. That's going to do it for another episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling. And to the end of our conversation with Steve Macklin, I just want to personally thank Steve for his service, number one. The fact that he felt led and drawn to serving his country in a very meaningful, uh, powerful in an important way. Thank you, Steve. I think that's something that is said a lot, which I appreciate. You know, whenever I'm traveling and jumping on a plane, they let the servicemen go on first and they always say, Thank you for your service. And sometimes we hear that phrase so much that it just seems like it's a thing that is said. But I know so many people that when they say that, they genuinely mean it. And I mean it as well. Thank you, Steve, for your service. And it's very much appreciated. And I know it's appreciated. I know it's appreciated by the listeners of, of this show. If you're one of those people, drop Steve a line and just say thanks to him. And also say thanks to him for sh being so open and honest and vulnerable on this show. I appreciate you, Steve. I thank you for coming on and sharing the lessons you've learned in your, your life journey and in your wrestling journey. I know my listeners uh, appreciate you too, Steve. So listeners, drop Steve a line. Tell him thank you for his service and tell him thank you for being a guest on this show because he opened up and told us a lot of really important life lessons and stories from his journey. That is exactly why I want to do this show, guys, to bring those things to you each and every week here on Wrestling is Life is Wrestling. If you want to support this show, take a screenshot. Put it up on your socials and I will retweet it. I'll share it. I'll share it with the world and let people know about my listeners and why you guys are listening to this show. If you want to get a bonus story, you love the stories that you heard from Steve, but you want to hear a little bit more. You're not done with Steve Macklin. Well, 
you can go and listen to a bonus story that is only to my patrons and it's a never before told story of steve while he was serving his country but also was a super huge wrestling fan and how those two worlds united in a very unique and hilarious way go on over to my patreon.com and you can get the audio version of that story and the video of that story right now by supporting me over on patreon.com slash cody diener you can also support me by going to pro wrestling tees.com slash cody diener buy yourself a t-shirt you can go to cameo.com slash cody diener get yourself a personalized video from me to you or a friend or family member you can do that right now i'll make it good i don't you know as you can tell by these intros and outros and by my podcast i like to talk i like to talk and i don't take talking to my audience lightly i take it very seriously so when i do these cameos they're not like 30 second snippets which i know some of these celebrities do they just like have like this thing that they say this two minute spiel that they give to everybody they just insert so and so's name into their cameo no 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 no. i personalize it i i make it meaningful and i would love to do that for you at cameo.com slash cody diener if you want to see me perform, whether that's in the ring wrestling or on a stage speaking, I want to let you know where I'm going to be. This weekend, September 30th, I will be in Guelph, Ontario with PWA Wrestling. Then I will be on the road speaking October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. I'll be in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. On October 7th, I'll be in Windsor, Windsor, Ontario, for the huge BCW, Border City Wrestling, 30th anniversary show, defending my Can-Am Wrestling Championship, and you'll have an opportunity to meet the one and only Kurt Angle. That's Border City Wrestling. Head on over to BorderCityWrestling.com and get your tickets for October 7th. October 13th, I'll be with Greek Town Wrestling in London, Ontario. I love going to London, my old stomping ground. Check that out, Greek Town Wrestling. October 14th, I'll be Pro Wrestling Eclipse in Oshawa, Ontario. On October 18th, I'll be heading to Ottawa, Ontario, right on the border of Ottawa and Montreal, Quebec. And I'll be speaking on October 18th. On October 19th, the next day, I will have hopped on a plane and flown to Newfoundland and wrestling for NEW in Newfoundland. And then the next day, I'll be speaking in Newfoundland at a conference to some amazing Youth for Horizons conference in Newfoundland. Then I'm hopping back on a plane the next morning and flying into Chicago for October 21st and 22nd. It's Bound for Glory weekend with Impact Wrestling in Chicago. If you want to do, go to Bound for Glory, our big annual event, and do the fallout of Bound for Glory on the 22nd, go to impactwrestling.com and get your tickets. I know it sounds insane to you, what i just went over that calendar oh man this is such a busy time of year for me september and october it's busy and i'm doing all of those things while also editing and producing and recording this podcast for you but i'm not complaining guys i love it i love what i do it's so important that you love what you do and i love giving you guys this podcast i love wrestling and doing independent wrestling shows if you want to put me on your show hit me up book cody at cody diener.com i'd love to wrestle on your event if you want me to speak at your school or to your youth group or at your conference like you heard i'm on the road i'm doing it man and you can hit me up at chrisgrayspeaks.com. That's my speaking page, chrisgrayspeaks.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-G-R-A-Y speaks.com. You can see all the topics that I speak on. There's speaking reels. There's all kinds of stuff over there if you want to bring me to your school or your event. I want to add it on my calendar. You heard where I'm going to be. If I'm going to be in your area, if you're out in Newfoundland, you want to add me to your schedule, heck, I'll squeeze you in somehow. I'll make it work uh because that's what i do and i love what i do and i love you listeners for coming and supporting me each and every week here on this podcast and we are gonna have an, another really cool guest next week and i'm not gonna tell you who it is but i will tell you 
Ooh, you guys are going to like it. You can find out who next week's guest is going to be by following me at Cody Diener, and I'll be letting you know who next week's guest is, and you'll be able to get that conversation early and ad-free over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. Again, thank you, guys. Thank you to my guest, Steve Macklin, and thank you guys for coming and seeing me next week where we will have a new episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling. We'll see you next week, guys. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life. Wrestling is life is wrestling. <laughs>